Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Hope you have a wonderful day. In today's video, we're going to talk about, I guess, our experience after buying lots of different ETF versus buying property. Yeah, different strategy of uh, building wealth that we have experienced from our personal experience. So, mm. and I, I realized that, I guess, when you start this journey, there's a few different options and one of them would be either buying shares, individual shares, mm. which we are not really a big fan of. Mm -hmm. um, ETF is like, I guess, a big pool of different companies together mm -hmm. and versus property where you have to have a big lump sum of deposit of, deposit of a big cash mm. amount somewhere to buy the property. Yep. So there's no right or wrong no. way of doing it. We've done a few of all of them. <laughs> Yeah, we done we done Last all time. of it. So how <coughs> how I started my investment journey, it was started from buying shares, individual Australian company shares, only because you don't need a big lump sum of money. I think I started with one thousand dollars, and then I built up to a bit more, and that share I've bought did increase um, not a lot, but that at least there's capital gain. So I sold it and then used partial of that money, uh, use the whole lot of the money plus some of my saving to become a deposit for my first home. First investment property. Yes. Yeah. So for myself, um, mm. my experience with a single share, um, it's literally my thought process like, oh yeah, I'm just going to buy a low, mm. sell high. Mm. And But it wasn't big enough that it, it sort of make a big dent in my life. Yeah, from, from a dollar to a dollar ten. <laughs> yeah, something, if you're lucky, a dollar ten. And then if you only bought it for a thousand dollars is a um, it doesn't cover up the cost yes like yes. the admin cost of buying the share and then selling the share and like oh, okay i ended up either break even or if not lose money yes um, and at that time was like following tips or searching which is the hot stock to buy yeah. we're i was looking for a short term mm -hmm. uh quick wealth at that time but then eventually lost some money on um buying small share and eventually it just gone or halt <laughs> or, or I don't even remember so for us that was back then and then re mm. and then on top of that we did do the wealth of buying lots of different properties yes um, because that that was that I think that's the stage 15, of our life 10, 10 15 years ago and then with that we were in late 20s 30s everyone's talking about property because no that, that's the stage of our life because mm. we're like getting married and when you get married the next day yeah. you'll be buying a house together yeah. and yeah. you know building wealth together and everyone is saying oh i bought this house and then oh i flipped this house i, I did renovation i make so much money hundred thousand dollars in there <laughs> and, and then we, sure we put our head in property as well we just try our our, our best to accumulate debt as much as we can at that time which is what most of the marketeering that i've seen so far like a lot of advert on my feed on my mm. social media feed it's like get as much debt as you can leverage as much as you can Le do this like pretty much grab as much debt debt and until you choke until you cannot borrow <laughs> any more money from the bank that's because it because the bank they they see a criteria how much you make for that year yeah if your property is making money they um they they put partial i don't know how many percent of your profit into um, to increase your borrowing power but there, there is a certain of point the bank will stop lending you money because it just does not uh, proportionally make it's sense not sustainable yes so and then and there's a few I guess um, a little advert that I've seen where it's like hey take out equity from your home to get more into debt oh, to buy it, more property that, that one you, you watch is not from your home from your parents, <laughs> from parents home. Home. they become so, the guarantor so I, I kind of love it though because it's like okay in in our life now it's like we try to reduce minimize debt mm. we try to live without any debt yeah. we try to pay off mortgages as quickly as possible in a short period of time mm. whereas the, all of this uh, marketing that i've seen is like no get leverage as much as you can and i don't know choke yourself in much debt if you want to grab more debt go get your parents equity get your parents <laughs> equity and then use that money <coughs> to split in different houses when well that's the original strategy original. we wanted but yeah. we were not thinking getting parents mortgage or anyway so yeah. yes if it's it, it, ideally it does work but, but what if things to be happen? honest with you for mm. some people that might work yes for us it didn't work for us it's like if you're leveraging debt it means you're leveraging 
everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, as in, what if fall over, you mm. lost your job, no tenant, breaking down, um, property manager wasn't taking care of your property, yep. um, your house got burnt down. That was not part of the equation. Mm, the it, numbers, it's not in the scenario yeah. that they put in. They just put in ideal world. In an ideal world, it's like, it hey, your tenant paying off all your mortgage mm. plus everything else. Um, and you're reaping the benefits of the equity or, or the prices going up yep. or something like that and the cash flow if there is such thing. Yep. Um, but what if it fall over? They yeah. don't see that the negative side of it. We've experienced the oh. negative side of it. I oh. think we've experienced Quite one of lot. the worst. Yeah. I think in long term <coughs> it will work if you can hold the property, if hypothetically nothing changed. Yeah. Same, tenant, Same tenant, rent going out, um, you keep paying the interest only and it's never have any vacancy, right? Mm -hmm. That will work. But for uh, us, we try mm -hmm. to minimize all that debt as quickly as possible. We try not to have any debt. Yeah, only because all these bad things happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a real uh, life environment, like what if these things go wrong? Mm -hmm. It happened to us. <laughs> Yeah, um, we did not foresee the house going to get burned down. Mm. We did not foresee that the tenant is going to damage the property mm. after, even though it's only been r newly renovated for yeah. less than five years. Less than one year, a like few yeah. years only. <laughs> so, yeah. like a lo lot of those things, and then, oh, okay, they damaged the property even more. Oh, mm. okay, the rental income that is coming in, it actually did not cover the expenses that was for us to re-fix all of this. Yeah. Um, not only that, it was negatively gearing where it's actually costing us money every week. Mm -hmm. So not only we have to fork out money to renovate the property, we also have to pay more money to the bank. Yeah. Because as a bank, they don't care. Who, as long as you make the repayment, you can keep this house. Mm -hmm. So that, those type of things, like you don't see that in, I guess, on the marketing side of it. They, don't, they only show you all the benefits, all the good stuff. Yeah. So I kind of laugh when every time I see those. I'm yeah. laughing. Well, hey, but that's how we got into it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we so, got sold. Yeah, no, we, we did get sold. Uh, we did get tricked in, this, in that aspect of it. Um, and then realizing reality versus expectation is yeah. way different. Yeah, it sounds so good. So, and then from there, we realized it goes, you don't have to buy a property. Mm. I'll say buying property is just because you have to use a substantial amount of deposit. Mm -hmm. So if you can purchase a property, which means financially you should be pretty good. Yep. But then now we realize, and, and the ongoing cost, the maintenance, the admin is just too much. And we have so much going on in our life. And now now be reading a lot of stuff and listening to a lot of podcasts, mm -hmm. we change, then we change our strategy to invest in ETF. So ETF is um, exchange traded fund. <laughs> yes. That's so there's uh, um, uh, a, a lot of companies they put it together and average the price and put it in the share market. So like I'll give you an example with the property. Just going back to that, a few weeks ago, mm. one of our investment property, the uh, what is it, the hot water? Yeah. The hot water didn't yeah, work. work out. Yeah. So that didn't work out. So that meant we have to send, I guess. Uh, what is our plumbing or if not electrician mm, to mm. figure out where is this water is not working mm. whatever it is we need to get this fixed because as a tenant i don't want to have a shower in a cold yeah we've experienced that mm. in our own principal place of home and mm. it's not fun having two kids trying to figure out where can we have a hot shower <laughs> um so that cost us money that gives me a little bit of a stress it was the during the weekend was it Can't yeah remember. it was it happened on the weekend and then yeah. you know after a few days it's actually get, getting fixed Mm. But that between those three, four days or whatever days it was, as a tenant, I feel a bit bitter. Mm. If I was a tenant, um, the house doesn't have a hot water. And on top of that, it gives you as a, I guess, owner, a little bit of stress because I need to fix this. Otherwise, they're going to complain a bit more. Yeah. And then no joke. Uh, what if they move out because of this? Mm -hmm. As an example, um, I run that scenario all the time. So the stress level is kind of high. As yeah, well. you, you stressed out a lot. <laughs> It's just stressful. I think it's because I've experienced the worst and I don't like having that yeah. stress. So, so anyway, we, we change our strategy to ETF because of all this headache. But sometimes in your back of your mind, still property is so good. 
property good because you look at it it's a big number coming in yeah. like the rental income is so big mm -hmm. it's like big amount of money coming mm -hmm. in ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. consistent consistently every like if you sign up if the tenant sign up for 12 months at least you know for the next 12 months this amount of money coming in every week yep okay whereas in etf you don't really see that you don't so but then when you invest in etf you should see what is your strategy Correct. then choose what kind of investment or shares you should invest in so at first we were looking into capital gain so we were checking whichever etf they have these historical capital growth consistently so you invest in them but then you're like we have to sell it in, cre in order to make money, then we change it. So what if we find ETF that is like the rental property will give you consistent dividends. Dividends equivalent to an Rent, income. yeah. Like an, yeah, an income, let's say. Uh, either a capital growth, same thing in property, you can mm -hmm. buy a property and hold it and hopefully in the future it's gonna go up in value. Yep. Same thing with ETF, we yeah. have that. Yeah. And but the ET realizing. if those ETF normally they pay out dividend, they're quite stable big company and the price of it is not going to It's not going to go up. Yeah, it's, up it doesn't fluctuate much. So <laughs> in if you check in last five years, normally they're just hovering around the same price, but at least they will give you dividend. Correct. As like an interest outside. Yeah. So but it's better us, than a bank, the interest. We did I guess the capital growth thing and realizing guys I need to eat. <laughs> I realized that I need a cash flow. Mm -hmm. So in order for a, to get a cash flow on ETF, um, because we've been doing a lot more on the property side mm. of it, cash flow is king, cash flow is king. But it's the same. So the strategy we want at first, when we buy property, we we're just looking in capital growth. But then we realized we, those property we bought, it was negatively geared. It's not giving us money. How can we change it to be positively geared or positively cash, cash flow? flow. So we changed that, and same as our ETF, we bought it at capital growth. Capital growth oh, learn our mistake again. So we, we leave it as it is, let them grow. We're not in rush getting money. So we invest now we invest trying to find those ETFs that can generate cash high flow. dividend. High dividends equivalent to cash, cash flow. flow. For yes. us, we need the cash flow more important than capital growth. At this stage. Because in cap, uh, the I cash flow. Not only at this age, this stage, but even that's how retiree, they support themselves. Yeah. Because so once they, they, if they sell the, the share with capital get, gain, they yeah. have to pay capital, ta uh, capital, capital gain, gain tax. tax. Yes. Not just that, it's like once you sold the asset, that you means don't you, have you don't golden have the golden what the Correct. goose that lay golden eggs. You don't have that goose anymore. Yeah. And it doesn't lay any golden eggs. Yeah. So now we're looking for more golden goose that lay golden eggs. Mm. So that's the simple format of it. Um, and so far we purchased what extra compared to what we've shown you guys. Yeah. I mean, we've diversified a lot more, mm -hmm. starting from spaceship race. Comsec Pocket, Vanguard, Vanguard, Comsec and then Share. Com now we're going into Comsec Share. And the beauty thing about this, like where we are in life now, mm -hmm. is like we can just with a small amount of money mm -hmm. diversify in all of this platform. Yeah. It all depending on how what you guys actually wanted to do in life, mm -hmm. right? For us, capital gain, it's good, but cash flow now is what we focus on. More important. On. Yes. So we look for a lot of cash flow dividends type of product mm -hmm. but there's no right or wrong strategy it depends on your comfort zone if you are into property you know about property market you comfortable and happy of course do it but um, we've tried it and just feel like it's too much hassle yeah, yeah. I mean what I like about the I guess the, the sh ETF in a sense mm. in a click 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 yeah your choice yeah so we narrow it down you know instead of a 10 different product or 10 different etfs and mm. narrow it down okay then i need to have which one is giving we give giving us um like meet our criteria yes mm -hmm. and this this is the beauty thing of it you, you can look at the charts you're looking at the history mm. in one screen yeah it's transparent. <laughs> it's transparent and you can buy and sell easily exactly it tells you right there and then it, whereas in a property is like oh potential this potential that mm -hmm. and you're hearing this either from the real estate agent or from the buyer's agent mm. or from the wealth creating people or like mm. all of this different information, data sales points, pitch. it turned <laughs> out to be it's a yeah, yeah. sales pitch. So anyway, that's just our two cents guys mm -hmm. coming from our own little experience. Um, hopefully this 
gives you understanding, I guess, the difference between the ETF and the property side of it. Yeah, our Coming experience. Coming from our own yeah. personal experience. If you enjoy this type of uh, stuff, don't forget to subscribe, comment. See you next time. Bye. Bye.